while browsing around on AliExpress for signage components, like things like electronic ballasts for fluorescent tubes and the end caps, I came across something that I really wasn't expecting. These series strings of XH connectors, and I recognize these. They were being sold in the same listing as uh, these LEDs. Let me just grab my LED tester. These LEDs light bi-directional style. So if I plug it in like this, the LED lights red. And if I turn it around, plug it in the other way, it lights blue. And what these are is strings that used to be used in ornamental lights that have kind of, uh, they're still available, but they've changed it for obvious reasons. Uh, they're still available. They're based on an aluminium frame that's welded together, and then it's wrapped with lots of aluminium wire wrapped around it and spiralled up, and then it's got things like clusters of uh, LEDs inside, almost like a spiral, like a spring of aluminium, but all wrapped around it into a big ball. And uh, I remember seeing these the first time. Now, the reason it's red, blue, and purple is because that's because of these uh, dual color chips. The controller that comes with these can actually change the polarity. And by varying the polarity, it's either going to be one polarity red, one polarity blue, or one polarity, uh, two polarities uh, alternating, and it's going to be the purple. But the first time I saw one of those lights, I was looking at it up close and I realised that the LEDs were in these little sockets and I thought, oh, that's really quite clever because it means you can change the LEDs. And then I was looking closer at it and I was counting the number of sockets to see what voltage it used and it was a lot. They were basically running off the mains. And if you consider that these LEDs are basically just pushed into these little connectors with single insulated wire, if I push one in like this, uh, I'll zoom down this. So they're pushed in, and if you look at that, if it's not pushed in completely, it exposes pins at the back uh, of the LED. You can also, keep in mind this was pushed in amongst coiled aluminium wire, and I don't think the light fitting was earth. It was a two-core cable going up to it, so it wasn't earth or grounded. Uh, there are so many places that the aluminium wire could have gone in and touched that. I wonder how many people got electric shocks off those lights. Suddenly... Uh, they were selling the ones with uh, strings of standard heat shrink sleeved low voltage lights. So I guess they get the feeling that that might have happened. But it's really interesting to find these. Particularly odd that it was bundled with signage. I wonder if it's used for uh, connecting to LEDs that are protruding through a panel for signage. The power supplies for it are either this classic capacitive dropper type or they are a version that does the polarity swapping because it looks as though it happens at mains frequency. I don't know for sure, but I will find out because uh, I've ordered one of the uh, variable colour ones. But to actually change the pattern, you just turn it on and off at the wall and it's presumably using a capacitor to hold the memory inside and it sees that the polarity has been changed. Um, let's open this one up. Where is my spudger? Where is my spudger? What have I done with it? There it is. I've looked at these before. I've used these before. They're quite a nice little power supply, but they're not perfect. They sometimes have little issues that need to be resolved before using them. They're definitely not isolated from the main supply. They're pretty much referenced fully to mains, uh, which is why these pose a slight shock risk, but they have their applications. So this is a capacitive dropper. Okay, let's bring the notepad in. With that circuit. That circuit there that somehow has been flagged up as non-child safe on YouTube. I'm not sure what I said in that video. I don't think I said anything bad, but it has been flagged for some reason. I've done something terrible, obviously, in the in the eyes of the algorithm. Let's focus down here, and we'll draw out the circuitry. So we've got this red wire. Well, that's the AC connections going in. In and out, it says. The AC in is going to the capacitor, and from the capacitor, it's going to the bridge rectifier at the end. Okay. The other connection is going straight up to the bridge rectifier. Well, that's straightforward enough. Bridge rectifier, AC in, AC in, plus out, minus out, uh, and the other one is going straight into that, and there is a discharge resistor, orange, orange, yellow, uh, that's 334-330K. Three, 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 three and four zeros um, for the resistor. 
let's draw the resistor in, not the capacitor. What is the value of the capacitor? 684, 680 nanofarad at 400 volt. That's actually quite high, but then you get these, they're designed for different lengths of strings, and I think they just vary the capacitor value accordingly. Interest goes up to, I've never seen the bigger ones, but this is the 50 to 80 LED string. The output of the bridge rectifier is going to the capacitor with a discharge resistor and then an output limiting resistor. Okay, so this is going out. Where's the positive? Positive is going to the resistor and then to the black wire. The, the black wire is the positive. I'll keep a note of that. So it's going to a resistor, a really badly drawn resistor. And then the output, uh, that resistor is, it looks like blue, grey, it almost looks like a red, but it's brown. Uh, blue, grey, brown. Uh, that will be 681, so 680 ohms. 68 and 10. Um, there's the capacitor, the electrolytic capacitor. The other connection is going straight to the output, which you'd expect. And there is a discharge resistor, presumably across the capacitor. Yes, it is. And it also has a value of 330K. Now, what's the value of the capacitor, the electrolytic? It's 6.8 microfarad, 6.8 microfarad, 250 volt. 250 volt isn't good because that means if the LEDs go open circuit, if you unplug an LED from this while it's on, or one gets knocked out, the voltage will exceed the rating of this capacitor. I'm going to have to change that. That's what I mean by these things needing tweaked and adjusted. But then after that, you basically, you can put as many LEDs as you like across this, noting that the more you put across it, the lower the current will get. It's kind of designed for the... Uh, 50 to 80, but I'm probably going to put the whole string across it and uh, pass uh, 100. Uh, so that's going to be 100, roughly about 300 volts across that. So that string. Um, it's notable that because this, uh, because they're all in series and there is 100 in this string, that will total up to about, uh, that will be roughly between 2.7-ish volts per LED. So it's going to be about 270 volts across this whole string. That's quite spicy. Right, tell you what, the next thing I'm going to do, I've already pre-cut some uh, colour changing LEDs and I'm basically going to start, I'm going to mark one of these leads positive, I'm going to get a bit of, I'm going to get a red sharpie and I'm going to mark it positive. And after I've done that, I'm going to start putting these LEDs in. Noting that if you did this with gallium nitride LEDs, the white and the blues and the greens, uh, you have to be very careful about polarity because if you get polarity wrong, it will just blow the LEDs. So this pushes in to the socket and you have to be careful to crop the lead short enough that it doesn't go all the way through to the back. I have seen other ones where the LEDs are just poking right through the back, live, bare metal. Right, tell you what, this is going to take a long time, is it not? Yes, it is. Uh, so I'm going to pause momentarily and I shall return in a moment, but I'll also change capacitor in that power supply to something more appropriate and less boomy. One moment, please. And we're back. So I've bundled these up to keep them a sort of relatively coherent pile. I've stuffed the LEDs in, and initially I've changed the capacitor in this to a 4.7 megafarad 400 volt capacitor, but I also had the idea of stripping the ends of the leads that came from the last holders and actually just soldering them in. It turns out, no, that wasn't going to happen because these are not solderable wire. I'm guessing they're aluminium, certainly under heat. When you hold a naked flame under, they just go brittle and drop down. So I'm guessing aluminium. I wonder if they're coated with anything. It doesn't look like they're tinned or copper plated. Uh, they weren't taking the solder well. How well have they made with the crimps is the question. The connectors are very similar to the GSTXH connector, but they're different. They're like a budget version with defects uh, and I put some crimps on the GST crimps 
the XH connector crimps for this better connector. And they weren't a perfect fit in there. It's not ideal. Right, tell you what, let's put this back in its box and then stuff electricity into this and see what happens. When I put this up this way, what is the buzz now? All right, I'll put it up this way. Just so it does kind of fit with the label, not that it's going to be any doubt now I've changed the colours. So we'll put this little cover on. And I shall bring it in the hoppy. And we'll see what happens. So I shall pull this wire back here. I bet this is copper coated I mean, Let's twist it. Yeah, it's just bouncing. Everything from China these days is coming across with copper coated aluminium. This is one of the worst things to happen in the electrical industry. That basically is fires waiting to happen because the uh, risk of burning up connections on the copper coated aluminium is high and also, uh, although it's theoretically got a lower resistance than copper, they're also using super thin stuff. Hmm. This is what happens when people invest in metals. Now, what's going to happen? I plug this in. Are the LEDs going to light at all? We shall soon find out, because I'm about to plug it in. Oh. They have all lit. That one under there lit blue. Oh, it's colour changing now. Why did it light blue initially? Oh, I've got a flickery one, a, a dead LED. That's all right. So these are colour changing LEDs. So I shall... Actually, I'll spread them about a bit. I'll turn the power off first. I'll spread them over the bench and you can see... And I'll leave them on for a while. So I'll just moment entirely pause so you can see the color shift but this is drawing 1.7 watts the current uh, it says 17 milliamps and uh, not sure what will be going through the leds it could be quite high i'm going to check that right now yeah because the although it's a uh, it's 200 leds yeah the two watts is higher than expected thought it was going to be one watt but that's reasonable enough it is quite a large value of capacitor um i'm just going to check that I will pause and I'll do that. One moment, please. And back again. So the power of 2 watts equates to... Ignore the 60 milliamps here because it's been converted. There's certain conversion changes to... When, when you actually convert from AC to DC, it, com, it increases the voltage but effectively lowers the current. So the current flowing through these LEDs is about 7 milliamps. And the voltage across the whole string is about 290 volts, which is quite spicy indeed. Uh, so these are colour changing LEDs. When they go through the all red bit initially when they're in sync, you can see the power does kind of change. It uh, changes the current through it because of the lower voltage. It, I think it increases the red and lowers down for the blue, which is the highest voltage. But the bad connections thing, if you, you know, uh, colour changing LEDs tend to reset if there's a disturbance. If you just bump them they kind of just uh they make bad connections and they reset so that's perhaps uh a look even just disturbing them yeah it's not impressive but that's okay so watch your eyes the light is coming back the light is back so it's quite an interesting Thing. Anyway, these series strings, I wonder if there are better quality ones. This is basically all I could find. Why is it just selectively groups resetting? And over here, it resets the whole lot when I disturb it. Uh, that's interesting. And it's cutting out there. I wonder if, uh, where, which is the one that's creating the bad connection. But these LEDs are basically just pushed into existing sockets. But I'm really thinking that that wire is not the ideal wire for it. So if you wanted to make something like this, it might be better actually seeing if you get wire with crimps pre-terminated onto it and just make your own out of the better quality XH type connectors. But um, it was certainly fun. It's, I mean, it's like fun enough to make this string. It is not as safe as a sort of a sort of properly insulated string because, you know, you can come in contact with a... Uh, with a mixture of luck and uh, faffing around, you could come into contact with those connections. And also the LEDs, when you pull one out, if you were to grip this to pull an LED out, you'd, as you gripped it, you'd push your finger into the connection. So that's quite intriguing that it was even in a product in the first place. But that's it. It's quite interesting um, and certainly worth doing and quite fun to do, just slightly dodgy.